Cooperation with local authorities has been essential for the successful operation of the armed sites. We're here at this site in Nauru because of the interest of the Nauruan government, the Nauruan people, and, and we have found uh, a very receptive attitude virtually every place that we go in the Pacific uh, to help us uh, make our measurement program successful. And without the cooperation of these island uh, nations, uh, we could not be successful here. And it has been really a great experience. The whole project has, has been very beneficial to Nauru. Uh, it has been my intention, and my government intention, to um, develop our people, especially in terms of, uh, uh, in, uh, in terms of technology areas, and uh, which we are very lacking at this stage. And uh, the development of our National Weather Service is part of it. And um, the international recognition that the Army has given us is another factor. And um, I'm very, very pleased with the, with the, with the projects. Now it is progressing so far, and assistance rendered by the locals and also by the uh, management team to get this project up and going. Uh, JNSR, this is Nara Operations. Uh, just wanted to make sure that both of uh, you and uh, the Ron Brown received... In July 1999, the ARM program conducted a special experiment in the area around Nauru. More than 50 scientists participated from the United States, Japan, Australia and Germany, working on research ships, aircraft and on the island. The purpose of this exercise, called Nauru 99, was to find out if Nauru's landmass affects the research results, and if so, how. As you know, this part of the world is mostly water, and uh, we're making our measurements over the land. And so we need comparisons of measurements that are made out of the open ocean to what we're making so we can relate that to the, the real regime here, which is ocean atmosphere interactions. So one of the main purposes of this study is to to compare measurements made out of the open ocean by ships to those made on the land. The United States NOAA research ship, the Ron Brown, was part of the experiment. The ship was at first stationed 200 kilometers from Nauru, far away from any landmass, and later moved closer to the island. Many sophisticated instruments were used to study the clouds, the sun, the air, and the ocean. A German team used a specially built laser instrument the size of a small house to detect water vapor in the atmosphere above the ocean. If you have uh, the sea um, with the water in and the water vapor is evaporating and it gets up uh, to a level where the temperature gets low enough that uh, cloud droplets can form. So we would like to look at how the distribution of the water vapors in the atmosphere, because then you can also see where uh, clouds can form. Scientists were measuring sea surface temperatures with very sensitive equipment. Satellite experts were comparing data from satellites above the Pacific with measurements on the ship. Well, the satellite overpass, depending on which one it is, um, they measured similar things, so we can use their data and our data to compare and see how, uh, whether our measurements are good or not. You've got a satellite up there right now? Yeah, there's one that passed about 10, about 10 minutes ago, and it should probably be in view for another five or six. Every three hours, a balloon was launched, collecting information about wind, temperature, and humidity high above the ship. Well, this is an extremely important part of the world for uh, weather and climate. A lot of the solar energy comes in here, and we like to think of this as a heat engine that redistributes that energy all over the world, all over the globe. And we're here to study how that engine works. The, the fuel, obviously, is the solar energy coming in, but the ocean itself is a large reservoir of energy, and there are many other ingredients to this fuel. The Japanese ship, the Mirai, one of the largest research ships in the world conducted the same experiments in another location exactly on the equator. We are trying to figure out what's a part of, uh, what, how much we can have a heat exchange between the ocean and the air. This part is showing us some fluctuations of wind speed and also temperature 
and uh, water vapor fluctuations. Uh, from those data, we can just calculate the, how much the heat exchange will occur at the boundary layer in this area. And uh, there is a huge amount of uh, heat energy exchange in the western part of the ocean. The Japanese also took seawater samples and measured ocean temperature, salinity, and oxygen content at depths down to 1,000 meters every three hours, day and night. This is the vertical uh, profiles of the sea. This green indicates the temperature. TTD 700. And uh, this red one indicates the UC salinity. And also, pink line indicates the dissolved oxygen. This is very typical because the, uh, in the equatorial ocean, they show the uh, uh, mix, well mixed layer here and uh, drop off uh, dramatically. So, uh, and also, sanity has a maximum around the uh, 200 meters or so. Scientists are now analyzing the data from ships, aircraft, and land based instruments in laboratories around the world. World climate has changed throughout history. There have been ice ages and warm periods coming and going in natural cycles. Today, though, scientists believe some changes in the climate are the result of human activities over the last two centuries. Industrialization and increased populations have caused more greenhouse gases to be present in the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is one of the most important greenhouse gases. CO2 is produced in vast quantities by energy generation based on fossil fuels, such as oil, coal, and gas, and by the use of petrol and diesel in the transportation sector throughout the world. For the first time in human history, the Earth's climate may change and sea levels rise as a direct result of human activities. Scientists believe our planet is getting warmer, and it's expected to continue to change in the future. However, there is still a lot we do not know about the climate system. The ARM project will assist us to better understand the complex natural processes driving our daily weather and climate. The work these scientists and local observers are doing every day here in the Pacific will help us better understand how the climate is changing. This will enable countries in the Pacific and around the world to better prepare for the future. It's a matter.